Two of the biggest controversies surrounding EVs are whether these cars are actually better for the environment and whether they'll actually be cheaper to operate in the future as energy prices rise. Many argue that they don't actually make sense because of these issues and that EVs are actually worse for the environment today and long term. Today we're going to look into the research there and the recent nuclear breakthrough that could mean limitless free energy for Teslas and EVs in the future, so let's get into it. From the beginning, the pitch with electric cars has been about the environment, but also about the future of energy. According to energy.gov, quote, with the Model S, Tesla brought the first zero emission, zero gas, full-size electric vehicle to market, boosting US advanced auto manufacturing. In response to the zero emissions claim, we often see articles claiming the opposite. That's because there's more to the story. You aren't simply buying a Tesla and then scot-free never emitting anything into the atmosphere for the life of your car. That car had to be made from materials the batteries were mined for eventually the car will die and the source of your electricity matters. If you burn coal to make the energy that goes into your Tesla, you don't see the emissions, but they are still there. This is what leads many to assume that these cars are worse for the environment. You charge from coal, and then eventually your batteries end up filling up landfills. With 3 million Teslas on the road, and every brand going electric, that would be a huge issue that people are paying extra for. More on that in a minute. Another big aspect of electric cars is that while it's a ways off and not in our lifetime, one day we will run out of oil. Eventually, we have to find an alternative source of fuel for transportation, so why not start now? The innovation is clearly there, and people love driving these cars. Even if you have no motivation to reduce emissions, this will become an issue eventually. Elon Musk said, quote, the bizarre thing is that obviously we're going to run out of oil in the long term. There's only so much oil we can mine and burn. We must have a sustainable energy transport and infrastructure in the long term, so why run this crazy experiment where we take trillions of tons of carbon from underground and put it in the atmosphere and the oceans. This is an insane experiment. It's the dumbest experiment in human history. To this, we may hear the argument that one day we'll run out of lithium. That would be a problem as well. More on that one as well in a minute. Back to emissions, it is important to pay attention to where we are generating electricity. This chart shows electricity generation by major energy source from 1950 to 2021. What we can clearly see is that while our electricity demands have increased, so have the generation of electricity from natural gas and most importantly, renewables. Coal usage continues to shrink. Many argue though that while that's a good trend, EVs will mean that we suddenly need a lot more electricity and that will increase coal production once again. The good news there is that we're seeing renewable electricity electricity growth accelerating worldwide and within the US. Quote, renewable energy is the fastest growing energy source in the United States, increasing 42% from 2010 to 2020, up 90% from 2000 to 2020. On top of this, you have options to make your own electricity to power your EV or Tesla with home solar. That's a great way to be off the grid, independent of fluctuating energy prices, and a great way to sustainably charge your EV. Either way though, if you charge from an increasingly renewable grid, someone is determining your energy price. Prices. It seems that neither gas or electricity can fix that dependence. However, there's a recent development here regarding nuclear fusion that could have big implications for Tesla and the future of EVs. Quote, nuclear fusion involves smashing together light elements such as hydrogen to form heavier elements, releasing a huge burst of energy in the process. The approach, which gives rise to the heat and light of the sun and other stars, has been hailed as having huge potential as a sustainable, low-carbon energy source. Essentially, if this could be reproduced, as scientists have been researching since the 1950s, it would mean that we could unlock a near limitless, safe, clean source of energy. Well, researchers from the National Ignition Facility in California did just that this week. For the first time ever, they got more energy out of a nuclear fusion reaction than they put in. Researchers managed to release 2.5 megajoules of energy after using 2.1 megajoules to heat the fuel with lasers. Dr. Robbie Scott called this a momentous achievement and added that the scale of the breakthrough and laser fusion research cannot be overstated. Again, fusion has the potential to provide a near limitless, safe, clean clean source of carbon-free baseload energy. Their experiments showed that laser fusion works, but there is still a long ways to go before this is fully achieved. The results of this experiment created about 0.1 kilowatt hours of energy. That is about enough to boil a kettle or drive a Tesla Model Y about a third of a mile. Clearly it has to be scaled up in a big way, but the fact that this happened at all is what truly matters. It's a huge breakthrough in science and clean energy that happened this week. As for the future of it, Professor Jeremy Chittenden from Imperial 
College London said, To turn fusion into a power source, we'll need to boost the energy gain still further. We'll also need to find a way to reproduce the same effect much more frequently and much more cheaply before we can realistically turn this into a power plant. Now, the idea of nuclear power might have you scared, but fusion is different than fission. Nuclear fission is what's currently used in a nuclear power plant. Quote, fission splits atoms rather than combines them, generating dangerous radioactive waste in the process. By contrast, nuclear fusion is far more efficient, generates almost no waste, and runs off hydrogen atoms readily available in seawater rather than radioactive materials buried in the ground. That makes it the ideal candidate for powering everything from houses to manufacturing plants if it could be scaled. The implications here are huge. Not only would this mean that when scaled, we could end up with unlimited power to advance all types of technology and reverse our emissions footprint, as Forbes says, fusion energy could relieve energy blackouts, power water treatment plants, and help us discover better ways to recycle and dispose of trash. New technologies could pull CO2 from the atmosphere at scale, mitigating climate change and reducing pollution-induced human casualties. Many of these ideas haven't made sense yet because the process of generating the energy to get these things done had a negative effect. This may no longer be an issue as this develops. And on the Tesla and EV side of things, quote, unlike coal and fossil fuels, fusion reactions generate no CO2 emissions or other byproducts. And since it runs on hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe, it's virtually limitless in its production potential. The great thing about Teslas and EVs in general is that the technology already exists using electricity as its power source. Since charging infrastructure, especially on the road, is still growing, many feel restricted with electric cars, but in reality, they open you up to many more ways to powering your car. In fact, they're already set up to be powered by electricity that just happens to be generated from nuclear fusion in the future. This is something gas vehicles definitely cannot do. The implications of this simply can't be overstated when you zoom out. Tesla just began producing and delivering the Tesla Semi after years of delays. This is a fully electric semi capable of driving 500 miles when fully loaded. Electric planes are starting to become more of a reality, and so are electric cargo ships. This one happens to be fully electric and autonomous. Now, there's a whole other side to consider for the future of our economy when it comes to AI and autonomy, but that's another video. My point is that electric options are being produced for the full supply chain of shipping. In the next few decades, we could see a package make its way to your home, delivered by electric vehicles throughout the entire supply chain. While this makes sense already from an emissions perspective, nuclear fusion could enable this whole process not only to run cleaner, but far cheaper. A factory makes the product, it makes its way to your country via electric cargo boat or plane, a Tesla semi or other electric semi takes it to your city, and a last mile electric delivery truck delivers it to you. This whole process could be incredibly cheap with the implications of nuclear fusion, bringing down the cost of every single thing that we buy. This is a huge breakthrough. It could very much mark a historic discovery that changes the way of the world, but it's still a ways off. For now, it's a discovery. It's incredible, but while looking at the long view is very important, nuclear fusion isn't happening on a grand scale anytime soon. So your Tesla isn't powered by unlimited free energy. It's powered possibly by your home solar, emissions free, but might also be charged from the grid. While we know coal use is decreasing, it's still used. So how does a Tesla compare to a gas vehicle today when charged from the grid? How much CO2 is emitted? Right here, we're going to talk about CO2 equivalent, abbreviated as CO2e, or CO2eq. CO2e, quote, is a metric measure used to compare the emissions from various greenhouse gases on the basis of their global warming potential by converting amounts of other gases to the equivalent amount of carbon dioxide with the same global warming potential. Tesla details their fleet savings by saying, in 2021, the global fleet of Tesla vehicles, energy storage, and solar panels enabled our customers to avoid emitting 8.4 million metric tons of CO2e. This is how much was prevented, but how is that calculated? Gasoline vehicles burn on average 8,000 gallons of gasoline in their lifetime, releasing 70 tons of CO2e into the atmosphere. It is nearly impossible to decarbonize this system because there are no economically viable solutions. A Tesla powered by the current global power grid mix will use 70 megawatt hours in its lifetime, releasing 30 tons of CO2e into the atmosphere. That means that if no changes are made to the infrastructure of the global power grid, no additional nuclear power plants or windmills are built, and no more solar panels are installed, a Tesla still releases less than half the greenhouse gas emissions of a gasoline vehicle. Further, unlike gasoline power, electricity is possible to decarbonize with well-established technologies such as wind, solar, and nuclear. Another way 
this can be illustrated is by looking at the efficiency of a Tesla. Fuel economy rates the Model Y as getting 122 miles per gallon equivalent. This is comparing a charged EV with a gasoline powered car. A Tesla is far more efficient. It uses much less energy to travel the same distance. So even if we do nothing with sustainable power generation, Teslas are still way more efficient. But that's just regarding emissions. What about producing the car? Tesla themselves detail how producing their cars results in higher emissions than an equivalent gas vehicle. Quote, the manufacturing process of a Model 3 currently results in slightly higher GHG emissions than an equivalent combustion engine vehicle. That's important to note, but they also detail that, quote, however, based on the global weighted average grid mix, a Model 3 has lower lifetime emissions than an equivalent internal combustion engine after driving 5,340 miles. So after about 5,340 miles of driving a Tesla Model 3 charged from the average grid mix, it's already reducing emissions compared to a gas vehicle driving the same distance. This can be improved even more by, of course, charging from 100% sustainable sources, and Tesla is improving this with future factory innovations as well. Other EV manufacturers are likely doing the same. But back to lithium. It's great if these cars can be charged from sustainable sources and one day be run running on limitless energy generated from nuclear fusion. But what about the millions of batteries cells ending up in landfills? Also, where do we get the lithium to make these batteries? Won't we just run out of that too? Lithium is an element required in EV batteries that must be mined from the earth. A Forbes article from 2020 titled, As Tesla Booms Lithium is Running Out, details these issues, but what we quickly see is that it's a production issue. It may pose a production issue for EVs in the future as they scale up, but it is by no means a scarce resource. This resource is plentiful on Earth. According to Energy X, quote, global lithium reserves are estimated at over 14 million tons, and depending on who you ask, the amount of lithium needed to meet current goals is somewhere between 0.5 and 1.3 million tons. On top of this, there are new developments in sustainable lithium extraction, and they only make up a small portion of a Tesla battery cell. The kicker on top of all of this, though, is that they can be recycled. Tesla already recycles battery packs themselves, saying battery materials are refined and put into a cell, and will still remain in the cell at the end of their life, when they can be recycled to recover its valuable materials for reuse over and over again. They also clarify that, quote, none of our scrapped lithium ion batteries go to landfilling and 100% are recycled. They detailed this in depth on their 2020 impact report, showing how 1,000 kilowatt hours of recycled batteries goes through a recycling process that nets them 921 kilowatt hours of raw metals for new battery production. Right now, this recycling is actually a fairly small business because these batteries last a long time in these vehicles, but eventually they will reach the end of their life. In the next few decades, we'll be seeing battery recycling grow, which is why dedicated companies like Redwood Materials exist. They say that, quote, on average, we recover 95% of key battery elements and supply raw materials back to US battery manufacturers. They plan to be producing 100 gigawatt hours of battery materials by 2025. This is enough for 1 million EVs. They also plan to be at 500 gigawatt hours by 2030, meaning that they have enough battery supply for 5 million EVs each year that will be coming exclusively from recycled batteries. No mining required. This cycle will continue to grow with this company and many others, ensuring that one day the required lithium mining for EV batteries will be negligible. It's a long process to get there with a lot of vehicles to replace, but one day we'll see the change come where more EV batteries are recycled than produced new. So the process of fueling a gasoline vehicle looks like this. You have domestic or imported oil. Obtaining that oil uses fuel. That goes to a refinery, which uses fuel. That is stored and then moved into a tanker or barge or through a pipeline, which uses fuel and requires significant dedicated infrastructure. That's also known to have various issues and cause oil spills. That is then transported to a gas station via a tanker truck running on fuel. A car is then filled up with gas at the station, likely using electricity, burns that gas to drive hopefully at most 43 miles per gallon on the highway or 60 miles per gallon on the highway in a hybrid. Each vehicle along the way transporting that fuel and the car using it is emitting CO2 and then once the car uses it, that gas is gone forever. One day that fuel source will eventually run out. The process for fueling an EV looks like electricity is generated by all of the means we discussed in this video, put into the EV and used to get you about 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour in a Model Y in the real world. Other EVs have even 
even better efficiency and it continues to improve. There are no emissions from using the electricity and more and more, the electricity fueling these cars is generated from sustainable sources like the sun. For many, their Tesla is entirely zero emissions. And in the future, not only could everyone be driving their cars with zero emissions down to the power generation, but they could be driving them for cheaper than ever. On top of that, the batteries used to store the energy will be recycled into a new EV, and that technology will continue evolving. Overall, the technology of EVs and clean energy is continuing to grow and develop each day. Developments like nuclear fusion could help ensure that we have all the energy we need and that energy will only get cheaper. This has big implications for Teslas and EVs, but also the entire supply chain that creates and ships everything we consume. Along the way, there are many important things we can't ignore though. Sustainable mining doesn't just happen because we want it to, and that's why the Global Battery Alliance, in partnership with Tesla and many other companies, is creating the Battery Passport. Ultimately, this will, quote, provide transparency in practices and impact of the battery along the value chain to all relevant stakeholders in the battery value chain, create a framework for benchmarking batteries along criteria by identifying those that are best and worst in class and providing minimal acceptable standards for a sustainable and responsible battery, and validate the track progress on the pathway to sustainable, responsible, and resource-efficient batteries. This will become increasingly important to track in the U.S. as well, as new EV programs are bringing lots of EV manufacturing to the U.S., all the way down to the raw materials needed for batteries. EVs have already broken records in many ways, but the future of EV scaling, price reduction, innovation, and sustainable energy generation is truly just getting started. There's a lot in store for the future, and I'm really excited to be a part of it. In the meantime, if you want to see the latest Tesla and EV news, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.